Hi, I'm Anita Kozan, and I'm from Minneapolis. Hi, and I'm Marge Charmley, and I'm from St. Paul. Welcome to Buy Plus Cities, a program by, for, and about the Buy Plus community and our friends and allies. We also happen to be the longest running television show on bisexuality in the history of the world. So thank you for joining us tonight. And I now turn to my lovely co-host, <laughs> Dr. Anita Kozan. And Anita, you know, I was on my way over here today. Uh -huh. I remember a while back, Lavender Magazine had a feature on Bi Cities, mm -hmm. and they referred to us as Cagney and Lacey. No. Remember that? No. Well, they did because I have a great memory you're it's blonde. Sure. And, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> you're blonde, I'm brunette, but you know, most of our viewing audience doesn't know who Cagney and Lacey is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I came up with a new one. Okay. A blonde and a brunette. All right. We are the bisexual Ellen and Rachel Maddow. Oh, oh. How do you like that, huh? Oh. We're rocking. <laughs> okay. A blonde and a brunette. So, all right. We, we like to have fun on this show. We do. We yeah, do. And yeah. thanks to you, we have a lot of fun on this well, show. Yeah. Thanks. Well, please introduce well, our guest. Without any further ado, yes. you know, <laughs> um, I am really happy to have this guest on our show. She's been on once before, and she she was here, I got sick and could not be here, and it's taken a number of years to get her schedule uh, where she was in town because she is all over the country. So we are going to uh, introduce uh, Ellie Krug, who is, in my estimation, one of the, really one of the jewels in the crown of uh, education, GLBTQ education in, in our country. Ellie has uh, credentials as an attorney and has done some amazing work. She's a transgender woman who uh, will tell us some of the things she has done, but probably even more so tell us the amazing work that she has done in recent years since her book Getting to Ellen was published, telling her own story of her transition. So I am very happy to welcome to our show, Ellie Krug. Thanks for being here, Ellie. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Anita. Thanks, yeah, Marge. I'm yeah. really thrilled to be here. Thanks so very much. Yeah. Well, what in, what in the introduction, was there anything that was like, oh yes, I want to say this too? Because oh. I told you you could tell us all kinds of things of what you've done and what you are doing, so. You know, um, it, uh, I'm really pretty humble, and, and I'm always a little bit reluctant to, um, to uh, tout anything that I do. Uh, it's just, because for me, it's really more about trying to make a positive impact in the world rather than, you know, Ellie Krug aggrandizement. <laughs> um, and so, but, you know, I, I did write my book, Getting to Ellen, and, and came out in 2013, and uh, the book uh, continues to sell well. Uh, I'm really thrilled about that, and I hear from people frequently who read the book who tell me that it's one of those books they can't put down. Um, I hear from a lot of people that they intended to read one chapter, and five hours later they're done, you know, reading the book. Oh, my and gosh. Well, so, your story is very compelling. Thanks. Very yeah. compelling and, and very raw and authentic. Mm -hmm. Well, you yes. know, my story is a story really about surviving the human condition. It really is. It's about trying to find our authenticity, trying to live an authentic life, the challenges that come with living authentically, you know, and there's a lot of, I mean, with not only Ellie Krug, but with anybody trying to find your authenticity always involves a degree of a lot of hard work and sacrifice. Sometimes it means losing love. Uh, sometimes it means finding love. Um, and I, in my story, there's all of that involved. And so um, I'm just very lucky that I was able to get the book written. I had to l unlearn writing like a lawyer and uh, yeah, learn yeah, how yeah, to yeah. write like a human. Yeah. So it's beautifully written. Thanks. And I think the, you know, the the finding love, and this is true for all of us, but finding and living loving ourselves, that that is one of the powerful messages of the book. For me, I had to, I could read some and then I had to put it down because it was so intense and I just, your writing is so powerful that I felt it so strongly. Oh, I kind of had to really parse it out a little bit and 
I, to this day, I mean, you know, I probably got the book within a year of when you wrote it, and to this day, I mean, it's still, I can feel oh. how I felt when I was reading Thanks. it, because it's so incredibly Thanks. well done. Well, we should let your readers know that, um, your uh, viewers know that the book is available on Amazon Kindle or Nook and mm -hmm. Apple Books. So, um, you know, I, you asked me before we went on what I'd like to talk about, and, and you know, really what I'd like to talk about is my work. And so what I do right now is I'm a speaker on human inclusivity, uh, and, and I go across North America speaking to Fortune 100 companies, colleges and universities, a lot of governmental entities, um, some nonprofits, and a mixture of other kinds of entities there. And I, I, I go and I talk, even though I'm transgender and I do have a Trans 101 talk, um, by large, the, what I get asked to do is to come in and talk about what it means to be other in society and how we can get past grouping and labeling people, how we can get past tribalism that keeps people other rather than, you know, how can we get to the point where we make them not them, but rather make them part of us. Mm -hmm. And I've been incredibly lucky to have a lot of places like my work and, and want to bring me in. And, and I, I end up finding that I am, for many people, the very first transgender person they've ever met. And I think that there's a huge responsibility with that um, because I can either give them a positive impression about trans people or they can walk away saying, you know, I fit all kinds of stereotypes that are out there on social media about trans folks. And so my goal is just to get people to understand that I'm trying to make my way through life. I'm trying to survive the human condition just like everybody else is. And for the most part, I think I'm able to convey that message. How did you evolve to that point where you wanted to do that kind of training? Because it seems like it's really coming from your heart and soul, oh. that authenticity, which also enables you to connect with audiences. How, how did you get from where you were and to where you are now? Well, so I had been a trial lawyer for almost 30 years, okay. civil trial lawyer with more than 100 trials in Iowa. So you started when you were 10, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love that part, but we all know. Um, and. And could I just interject sure. that I am so impressed. Uh, Daniel Thomas Cummins reminded me that you are one of the few people in the country to try a case as both a man and a woman. Right, not the same case, but I'm the only, right. you know, <laughs> right. one of the few You transitioned lawyers. very quickly, yeah. otherwise the case took a long right, time, right, right? years and years. It was a long case, but um, I am, and, and thanks. And, and, um, and in Iowa, uh, the, I, I was well accepted. The, I ended up losing my law firm because I transitioned, but we don't need to get into that. To answer your question specifically, mm -hmm. you know, I transitioned um, 10 years ago, so... Um, Actually, my anniversary of transitioning was just four days ago. Oh, so, happy anniversary. Yeah, happy anniversary. thanks. So I'm 10 years in. And um, even though that was 2009, and this is 2019, and even though it's only 10 years, for the transgender community, it's the equivalent of 50 to 75 years. I mean, we have just moved as a society so much farther um, than what we were in 2009. And so in 2009, when I transitioned, people were asking me, come and talk to us, what's this transgender thing? I don't understand anything about it. And so I first, you know, would informally speak to people about what it meant to be trans. And then I created a very formal, you know, a written description with learning goals and all that, and then a written handout. I don't use uh, PowerPoints, I don't, I don't like PowerPoints. You know, but a very formal Trans 101 program, but then I understood. I came to realize that really there's a whole lot bigger issue here and that people were really hungry for understanding how to be good to people who are other compared to us. Mm -hmm. And so then I, I developed this very innovative human uh, inclusivity training called Gray Area Thinking. I've gone out and and uh, trademarked the phrase hmm. for training purposes, um, created a very formal platform uh, for that training. It has four modules to it. And uh, as it turns out, as I said, people really like this training because it's infused with concepts that are easy to understand. I, I continue to hear repeatedly that I'm not 
I'm not talking to people, I'm talking with them, and I'm not ordering them to think a certain way, but that instead I'm inspiring them to come and, and, and think differently. And I think it is, Marge, about that they see the authenticity in mm -hmm. me, and they know that I really walk the walk that I'm talking about. Um, and, and, you know, there are some themes that underlie it. One of those themes is the power of human familiarity about getting to know people. Then another theme is about all of us attempting to survive the human condition. We are, regardless of whether you're gay or lesbian or bisexual or trans or whether you're, you're black colored or white colored or brown colored, you know, whether you're male or female, younger or older, everyone is trying to make their way through life. And the training reinforces that even though we want to label people a certain way, that in the end, we all have a lot of things in common. Yeah. We really do. If we can just get past our fear of even talking to or considering the idea of speaking with somebody who is other. Well, one of the things I'm reminded of that seems a little different in 2019 as opposed to 2009 is how divisive our political climate is, it is. and how much pushback and how many, you know, the, the progress we've made as a GLBTQIA community is now really getting forced the other way. And there's just such hatred and vitriol out there. And I'm wondering, you know, if you've encountered that in your um, endeavors and, you know, how you have dealt with that. You know, I've been very lucky. I, I can count on one hand the number of times I've received a negative comment from anyone on Facebook or social media in some other form about me being me. Um, I've been extremely lucky. Perhaps it's partly my approach to things. Mm -hmm. But you're right, there is a lot of division in our country. And I have another, actually, another talk about that's titled uh, um, uh, um, Bridging uh, the, the Great Divide and Perspectives on Grit, Resiliency, and the Four Commonalities, which is about literally how really everyone really is hurting. Everyone really is afraid together. And, and if we can, again, have some concepts about understanding that we are, many of us are broken inside. Many of us are struggling inside to make our way through life. And when we do that, when we don't give ourselves a break, it's a whole lot easier to not give other people a break. It's a whole lot easier mm. to other other humans. You're the psychologist, you know, uh, I'm speaking, I'm starting to you know, creep into your territory where you have far more creep away. authority than I do. <laughs> but, but, um, but I will tell you, I am finding in my training, because in gray area thinking, there's an opportunity for people to self-label, OK? I have um, 19 uh, li labels, signs or identities on the wall representing things such as uh, skin color or religion or um, socioeconomic class or gender. You know, and I have a sign for compassion and a sign for family and some other things. And I allow people, I, it's an exercise where I give people prompts and I have them go stand by various signs. But the last prompt of this exercise is the identity I want to be known for is. And I am finding across North America in all sectors, whether it's government or nonprofit or whether it's business, I am finding that somewhere between 95 to 99 percent of the room is standing under one of two signs in response to the prompt, the identity I want to be known for is. One of those signs is family, mm -hmm. and the other is compassion. And out of the two, the vast majority of people are standing under compassion. I would never have expected that, because if we go on social media right now, just based yep. on what you said, everybody is at everybody's throat. That's not true. I think almost everyone wants to be good mm -hmm. to other people. I do. It's just that we're afraid or we don't know how to do it. And my work is giving them a tool because gray area thinking is a tool set on how to be welcoming to people who are other. I am blown away by, I am talking countless trainings in all sectors of America, in all regions and people continue to want to be known for compassion. And then when they stand under family, family is about compassion because mm -hmm. family is no longer simply about blood. Family is about affinity. I've been best friends with somebody since eighth 
great. He was the quarterback, if you remember from my book. He was the quarterback of the football team. Mm -hmm. I was the frontline guard. He never left me. We are the best friends in the world. I talked to him not more than uh, two hours ago before being on this show. But I'm, I'm playing with this ring because this is the family, his family ring. And I get to wear the ring because I am part of his family. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, yeah, family oh. of choice. Yes, family oh, of choice. absolutely. Yep. Yep. And so when we talk about compassion, okay, that we, I don't have people standing by socioeconomic class. I don't have people standing by gender. I don't have them standing by um, skin color. I don't have them standing by other things that if you go on social media right now, you would think, well, that's what's really important to people. That's what they want to be known for. No, people want to be known for their kind hearts. And don't you think, now I'm gonna say something silly, but don't you think it's kind of ironic that it's a transgender woman who's bringing this out in people? I think that's kind of ironic with what people think of trans people generally. Heart, you know, heart is so powerful and it is something that I, you know, from having had the experience of meeting so many people who uh, are trans, more certainly more women than men, but the 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 self love, the the going through all the changes of coming to love who they truly are, and being willing to share that with. Um, with their loved ones and then sometimes with, with, with the world, that takes incredible heart. And so I understand the irony. I also feel the appropriateness of you being that person. Well, There's no one I, better. Thank you. And I know, I mean, I have great privilege. I mean, to, to be asked to go to all of these different places. Ellie, come in and talk to us. Oh my goodness, that is so humbling, you know, but I'm going to take those opportunities because I do need to show up. I mean, for me, um, I am a student of Dr. King and Robert F. Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Like you, I was alive when they were alive, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd been reading the paper for several years before Dr. King and Bobby Kennedy were murdered. And I listened to them. I read their words and I listened to them on TV and do you remember, they told us that we have an obligation to make this world a better place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they do, they did, and, and, and they said it's not something of convenience. So it's not something that we do between, you know, yoga and take out sushi about making this world a better place. And when I trend, I'd always been an idealist because of them, but I could never live as an idealist when I presented as a man because I, I was working so hard to try and stay male. You may remember from the story, I was married to Lydia for a long time. She was the love of my life, and I knew that if I transitioned, I would lose her. So I worked a long time to try and stay male, to stay presenting as man, as a male. Um, but once I transitioned, once I got over that hurdle, I realized that you can't choose your gender. Once I realized that we have to live our lives authentically wherever it takes us, then I said to myself, you're going to go back to that 11-year-old kid, and you're going to be that idealist. <laughs> and you're going to go out and try and make the world a better place. And that's, that's what my work is now. That's exactly every time I go into a room and I start a training and I talk to people. I mean this. The words of Dr. King and Robert F. Kennedy are coming through my mouth. Yeah. Their ideals, those things that, that they taught, because you know what? We have lost those things in our country. We have, we've lost our way. And if I can help people get back on that path by understanding that, that we are all in this together, that we need to be there for each other and to make people realize that actually you are all good people, even though society, you know, social media is telling us right now we hate each other but we really don't. And if I can do that, I think that that's a pretty darn good way to go out. 
Well, and you are doing that. You still have a dream, and you are living the dream. And we need that more than ever. Um, you know, as a psychologist, the American Psychological Association for the past, say, 10 years has done a Stress in America survey. And for most of the last 10 years, the top two stressors for most Americans were money and job. Now it's gotten the political climate and the divisiveness and this underlying anxiety and tension and yeah. stress. And so anybody like yourself who can bridge the divides and come forward with your heart, you know, it's hard to hate when somebody comes forth like you have. I agree. That's, that's good. My, we need you know, that. My only challenge is that I'm just kind of off under the radar. You know, this message that I think is a wonderful, huge message that's being missed that people don't understand. You know, I, 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 I fret, okay, to fit a stereotype, but I fret that that message will never really make it make the light of day because I'm just, you know, so under the radar. I'm not a political figure. I'm not, I don't have much uh, cachet. Um, I mean, that won't stop me, of course. I mean, I will continue to be persistent. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> right. And nevertheless, she persisted. <laughs> And well, you know, there's a there's a movement I, that I'd read about. Um, I know, I think the article I read it happened in Say Club, but it's happening other places too. But of people coming together in conversation, people who are very different from each other, to talk about their fears of the other. Right. And so, you know, that, and that's just one thing that that I've read. But I think there are other places too. So. Yep. The better I, angels are out there trying to change yes. the conversation and yes. get people to understand that whether you're red or blue or Bernie, it doesn't matter. That we all have these things in common. So, but um, I'm just, uh, as I said, I'm just incredibly grateful that I get the opportunity to do the work that I'm doing. And I like the vision of you the 11 year old's mm -hmm. passion yeah. that that's you know that's what really fuels you and as you say i mean you consider it such a privilege to to get to speak to these people and then for those of us who are back here in minneapolis while you're uh traveling hither and yon um getting to read about some of some of your work like in uh, lavender magazine your column the there, press. which now I understand is in women's press, and then you're also on the radio. I had somebody that I met somewhere, like at a at a music event, say, "Oh, there's this woman who's on the radio. You should hear her, honestly." And, <laughs> and you should and get her told, on the show, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So really, get her really. on the show. <laughs> they, and they didn't know me. They yeah. just said, "Oh, there's this woman. You should hear her." And so it was you. Yep. It was you. Yep. I have a weekly so, radio show around about idealism, as it turns out. And so. um, what? Uh, what? That's nine fifty. Yeah. So the AM. Yeah, the radio show and then podcast is on AM nine fifty. But it, you can link on, to it via the web. Um, the ty the name of the show is LE two point oh radio. LE two point oh radio. Yep. And it's about idealism. So I highlight idealists. I bring in. I interview people who are doing idealist work, um, and I share a little bit about my work because the station owner wants me to talk about the work that I'm doing. So We're down to three minutes, less than three minutes, and you have some other work, but I want you to take an opportunity to just make sure that you share whatever you want to share that we may have missed. You know, um, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot that I'm doing, and I'm in many ways, just an army of one. I am. <laughs> and, uh, and you have the force of an army, I might add, with all of <laughs> well, what you're doing. Well, it, it's, it's all good. Um, if somebody wants to find out more about my work, they can go to my website at elliekrug.com. They can sign up for my monthly newsletter, The Ripple, which is named oh, yes, after a Robert yes, F. Kennedy right. speech. I have oh. 7,100 7, people on the mailing list for my newsletter, The Ripple. It goes out once a month. You know, and all that I would say um, is just this, that we are compassionate humans. We are. But it's incredibly important that we have compassion for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Many of us are beating ourselves up. Many of us don't believe that we're good enough. 
you know, that if only we could do X or Y or Y plus, maybe everything would be all right. And what I, what I urge to our audi my audience is when I talk with them, because I talk to them about this, is to just ask yourselves one question every day. Am I doing my best under the current circumstances as they exist? You've got to put that circumstance part in because it's always changing. And if the answer back is, yep, I'm doing my best under current circumstances, that should be good mm -hmm. enough. The light that you shine, Ellie, which I mm. think is important to hear about, is that through all your trials and tribulations, you know, you've written about them in your book. Um, just about anybody who's transgender or marginalized in our country, you know, has similar experiences. But you came through with compassion. You didn't come through bitter, you came through better, and mm. you came through with love. And love is bigger than that which divides us. So hats off to you and your resilience and your fortitude and maybe most of all your compassion. Yeah. Thank you for that. And we are coming down the home stretch. So, so did we, do you remember how we say goodbye to the audience? I, I, I think so. You, I'll, <laughs> I'll join in as you take the lead. So okay. let us thank Ellie Krug. Oh, thank you so much. Activist. Ellie. Thank you. Compassionate transgender woman, author, difference maker. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Absolutely. thank you for being here. And join us in our signature goodbye. Look at camera three. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye for now.